Speaking of crosses, we do have the true cross above the tabernacle today, and after Mass we'll venerate it um, and do some, say some special prayers to honor the Holy Cross. Then you, then we'll, I will bless you all with this precious relic, and then you may come to the communion rail to, to venerate it. But, as I said, speaking of crosses, yesterday was just one of those days. And sometimes you can just sort of feel them coming on. I booked my ticket last minute to come here, thinking it's just too much to drive. It's about a six-hour drive from Cincinnati, once it's all over and done with. But I decided to fly, knowing that Chicago in the summer is a bad place to fly into. Most of the time you're going to get delays or cancellations in the end. That's just how it goes. So, sure enough, door to door yesterday, my, my trip took 14 hours. That's longer than the trip from Minot, North Dakota, all the way to here for a six-hour drive. It's just one of those days, one of the days where it's our Lord reminds you sometimes during those little crosses like this, it's time to do penance, my son. And you do your best to just offer it up and realize it is a blessing from Almighty God to do that. But then he always sends his little Simon of Cyrene's along the way too. Those little things in the day that really help you to get through it so you don't you just don't totally lose it and lose your patience along with it. He sent some pastoral work, but then he sent someone, another man that I met, probably about my age, from Australia. So we had a little, nice little conversation. It covered everything from politics to political correctness to, to just about everything, much of which is a conversation you can't have with most Americans because everything is so, sens so sensitive here. Topics are so very sensitive. But with him, it was a different story. But I only tell this story to help you all realize we say it all the time. We read about it all the time. It's in all of our prayers. It's in the gospel. You will have your crosses. There's no escaping it in this life. It could be anything from a temptation to a sickness to, to a crabby spouse. It could be anything. And we're going to have them. The question is, how are we going to bear this cross? We can lose our cool. We can, we can bear our cross as the, the bad thief did, who was blaspheming our Lord the whole time he was on his cross. Or you can be a Saint Dismas, blessing God the whole time, even though you don't feel like you mean the words. Blessed be God. May thy holy will be done, not mine. Even if you don't feel that you mean these words, they will be, they will give you an eternal reward in heaven, as long as you try to mean them. Bishop Dolan always tells us, the priest, that sometimes you have to fake it to make it. And that's, that's the whole spiritual life. We're not being hypocrites about it, but we're trying to put on a good, Good face, a smile sometimes if you can manage it. To fake like you're happy because it's pleasing to God. St. Therese did that her whole life. She said that she would never miss the opportunity to gain merit by bearing her crosses. She would never, she would try to give a smile, a simple look, a gesture, anything that would sort of Fool our Lord, if you will. He, she always wanted, she said that she would try to hide her sufferings from our Lord. Obviously, you can never do that. He knows all things. But that is how she did it. Sometimes you have to trick your mind that way, too. To play a little spiritual game with our Lord, hide and seek, as we do so often, or just try to hide your sufferings. She also, in her deathbed, had an image of the, the crucifix uh, right beside her on her pillow. And she was going through some 
excruciating pains with tuberculosis and all, but she took her fan, you know how they had those old-fashioned fans, and she actually fanned the crucifix. And she said, it's not my, t my time to experience consolation, but we have to console you. It's your time to sleep and to rest, because no one ever gives you rest, Lord. We're always going to you with our knees, and you've been on the cross for such a long time. You take the rest. For now, I'll endure the cross, and I'll endure it, and I'll carry it for the salvation of souls and for your glory. These are the thing, the thoughts that we should have going through our mind as we experience crosses. Ask your guardian angel today to remind you of these things. Remind you that this cross that our Lord wants to send you here and now, whatever it is today, is the one that has been arranged from all eternity that you should bear at this time, and it will raise your place in heaven. For all eternity. You look back to this day and this cross and forever and ever in heaven you will praise God that he sent it to you. Once you realize how much happier you are in heaven because you bore it with patience. So let us today then think of this cross, the true cross. Our Lord actually carried that piece of wood on his shoulder up Mount Calvary, never complaining, never whining, but blessing his Father the whole time. Until at last, he stretched out his arms on it, was nailed to it, his precious blood flowing from his wounds on that piece of wood, and then eventually gave up his life on that piece of wood for you and for me. The least we can do to show our gratitude today is to take those little crosses, unite them with that piece of wood, so that now it forms, with that piece and your piece, it can form a, an entire cross through which your redemption, your salvation, will be worked out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.